I'm continuing today with nothing new under the sun. And then I finished with there's a time for everything. No matter what goes on in life, we know that God's in control. And we know that God allows things bad to happen. Um, but when, it's, when you say nothing's new under the sun, what we're saying is, is history repeats itself. And all through the book of Ecclesiastes, there are facts that stuff happens over and over and over. Wars and rumors of wars. Uh, murder. Uh, parents, kids hating their parents. All that stuff is all in the Old Testament, and it just happens over and over and over. Uh, with all that that goes on, we must trust God and remain faithful. I don't care what it is. And, and, and I'll, I'll say, too, that even in today's culture, with the stuff that happens around us, sometimes we say, why? Why can this happen? If we're, if we're a Christian nation, and we know we're not anymore, but if we do, in many cases, profess to be a Christian nation, why can the and I'll just say the infanticide law be that they're trying to pass just get bigger and bigger and bigger as the weeks go by. It's just, it's, 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 I don't understand it. But we also know that God's always all, also faithful to us. Just like I said, He'll never leave us or forsake us. And everything that happens, it happens for a reason. And and when those things happen to us, it's either to test us, to improve us, make us walk closer, or sometimes just to, uh, did I say correct already? Correct us? Sometimes things happen just to correct us. The next slide. Futility of pleasures and possessions. Now, I put on my first slide that it's, it's Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm going to get there. I'm, I know I will. But futility of pleasures and possessions. All that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them. Do we, do we live in a get-it-now society? National debt, personal credit card debt. Why does that happen? It's because everything we want, everything we see, we want it now. You, you know, you go to McDonald's and you need a, you want a hamburger and that apple pie sure looks good. None of us need it. But how many times do we buy those apple pies or them french fries or those other things? Just because I want it. You know, this is getting bigger and you just keep feeding it because you want it. All that my eyes desire, I, I did not refuse. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart was pleased because of my labor. Hey, I work for it. I deserve it. Right? I've worked hard all my life. I deserve this stuff. I deserve that. We had somebody over yesterday that, that uh, he, he drove by the car lot. And he said he saw the most beautiful truck that he ever bought, ever saw. He said, I'll look at it later, maybe. Maybe. He drove back by the car lot. And he said, that really looks nice. Guess what he did? He bought it. He bought a brand new truck. He didn't need it. He's retirement age. He hadn't even got his retirement yet. But he bought that brand new truck, okay? Because of the eyes. All the eyes see. And, and I, labor, I worked hard all my life. Thus I consider all my activities with my hands, had, <clears throat> my hands had done, and the labor which I exerted, and behold, all was vanity and striving after the wind. You know, everything, you know, it's worthless. What's going to happen to that new truck? It's going to rust going to break down. It's going to whatever. It's, 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 you know, and I'm not saying it's wrong to have nice stuff. 
I've got nice stuff. I got more stuff than I need. I, you know, I could. We're, Debbie, yesterday I was, I was so happy. She says, "Why don't we get rid of this, 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 and this?" Are you kidding me? Anybody need a refrigerator? <laughs> you know, well, you we can't have a refrigerator. Huh? We got three. Oh. We got three refrigerators. Okay, we got a refrigerator in the garage. We got two refrigerators in the house. We got two, you know, what tickled me the most of all is we got two gigantic dining tables, dining room tables. Okay, two of them. We're going to get rid of those and get tables like we got in the church because we don't need them. We can fold them up and get them out of the way when we don't need them. So, you know, it's a little things like that that just, you know, we got, how many cou one, two, three, three couches in our room, in our living room, and three, three cha four chairs in the living room, that and then. You know, I need another couch and get rid of the chairs. You know, because when my grandkids come, <laughs> you know. But anyway, just, yes, I do need those, but could I do without them? Yeah. You know, it's just what we do. We add, 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 add. Um, all was vanity and striving after the wind. And there was no profit under the sun. And how the wise man and the fool alike die. We're all going to die. No matter how smart you are, no matter how dumb you are, you're going to die. So I hated life. You know who wrote this? Solomon. What's the smartest man in the world? Or wisest man in the world? So I hated life. For the work which I had done under the sun was grievous to me. Because everything is futility and striving after the wind. Now, there's nothing wrong with pleasure. There's good pleasure and there's bad pleasure. There's nothing wrong when... I go camping, and I sit by the lake, and I just relax. That's pleasure to me. I don't have to go fishing. I don't have to do anything but just sit there and relax. Okay? When we take our kids to Kentucky Kingdom, I will sit in the camper while they're in there enjoying the fun because that's what I want to do. I want to relax. That's pleasure to me. But sometimes our pleasure, if I took my camper and every Sunday, week after week after week, I called Ron and said, I'm not going to be here today, I'm going camping. That's wrong pleasure. If I had that boat, you know, Ron's got a boat in his garage, didn't get, even go out last year, I think I heard. Okay? He's got a nice boat. We need to do a church trip. But it didn't even get out of it didn't get out of the garage last year. Didn't I, don't I remember you telling me that? So see, pleasure's okay, but when it interferes with your relationship to God, that's when it becomes wrong. <clears throat> All my eyes desires. He didn't refuse it. My buddy that bought that truck this week, two weeks ago. Bing! And he had to have it. He had a new truck. Now, I'm glad for him. But when he told me his story yesterday, I thought about this message. That, you know, it was like it grabbed hold of him. And that's what they do. Everything that pleasure grabs hold of you. Uh, it, it, the word here says reward. It was my reward for my labor. A reward is what you receive for the activity that you put forth. If you work hard, you can have those things. If you work hard, you can have those things or you can give it away. Now what's better? Give it away. Uh, activity was vanity, useless and vain. Uh, striving, struggling after the wind. Profit, there was no reward for what he had done. Because he, he, it was futile to him. It was just stuff. Sometimes stuff is not profitable to us. Stuff just adds up, adds up. You know, when you have a bunch of stuff, 
It just cost you a lot more money. It cost you more money. He hated his life. You may accomplish something. You may might make a lot of money, a fine home, a fine car. But without God, it's useless. You can have everything that man says is good, but without God, it's useless. Everything is futile when you're not doing it for God's glory. And then I, I, I changed the wording on this. We do things to impress people we don't like, to make them think we are something we are not. You know, my, we used to talk about that when I was younger, about the, the things that you buy to impress people that you're so far in debt that you can't do, you can't go out to eat. I can remember when I was a kid, my parents, we never had a lot, but my parents, the preacher was selling a car. And uh, <clears throat> it was a nice car. A Buick LeSabre, the big one, okay, when they were big cars. And my dad just had to have it because the preacher had one, the, the elder had one, the, this one had, everybody in the, we, we were the only ones that didn't have a new car in the church, except for Joe Alsop. He drove a 1957 Cadillac <laughs> for a hundred years, seems. But everybody had new cars. So my dad decided to buy that new car, or use, new used car. We bought it, and within eight months, we got rid of it. You know why? We couldn't afford the gas that had to be put in it. We couldn't go on vacation anymore because we had bought that car. That's what we do sometimes to impress people. Now, I don't think he was really trying to impress, but on the other hand, it was the nicest car he ever had, and he was so proud of it. Thus I hated futility of labor. <clears throat> Thus I hated all the fruit of my labor which I had labored under the sun. For I must leave it to the man whom will come after me. That story hits home with me. Not personally, but a, a close friend of mine. 25 years ago. This lady, his, his mother-in-law, worked for a very successful businessman in Nashville. In fact, Roger and his wife moved here because his wife was offered a job with this very successful businessman. Um, when he got ready to retire, to shut down, not shut himself down, not his business, he went to the lady, Roger's mother-in-law, and said, I've been very successful. I've got more money than I can spend. I've got more money than my wife can spend. You have worked for me for 30-something years and always been a faithful employee. I'm giving you my business, 51% of my business. I'm going to give you 51% of my business. And she says, wait, you got a wife. He says, she's got more money than she'll ever spend. My insurance policy will take care of her for the rest of her life. I'm giving you the business because you've been a faithful employee. But the reason I'm giving you 51% is so you'll have controlling interest of this business. I'm giving my two sons the remainder of the shares 20 or whatever that is 24 and a half percent or 23 and a half percent I'm giving that to my sons but you've got controlling interest well why are you doing that why don't you just give it to your sons because they don't have a work ethic because I gave them everything they ever needed. I gave them everything they ever wanted. And because of that, they don't know how to work. Within six months, the older of the two sons lost 
his money, his, his share, because he wouldn't show up for work, and he went so far in debt because he had this business that they forced him to get out. Okay? Because he's just spending money like crazy. Within a year and a half, the second son sold his shares because he didn't like coming to work. Five years later, the company that bought his shares, and I guess the other shares that were lost, okay, to be bought out, came in and bought the whole thing. This lady that I'm talking about died a millionaire because she had a work ethic. She worked for a man that had a work ethic, but the sons lost everything because they didn't have a work ethic. And that's what this verse is saying. I, I've done it. I've done all this stuff, and I'm giving it to somebody that don't deserve it, that will probably lose it. Uh, yet, <clears throat> we have control over all the fruit of my labor, which I have labored wisely and under the sun vain. When there is a man who has labored with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with them, this is vanity and great evil. Everything. His corporation, his business, went away because he gave part of his business to two sons that had never labored. Now, I can go the other way. I, I think of Ron, okay? Ron's sons work for him. And Ron set up things for his business. And his sons work, okay? A man that I worked for in Memphis, his sons grew up in the business and they worked. And Dean is gone, but the business is still going and still successful. One day, Ron will be gone, maybe. <laughs> Not dead gone, but retired gone. And his business will keep going. It's all in how you raise your children. If you give them everything, they won't ever be worth a flip. If you make them work for what they've got, if you teach them responsibility, they'll be okay. There's nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and tell himself that his labor is good. This also I have seen, <clears throat> that is, if from the hand of God, everything comes from the hand of God. Everything you got comes from the hand of God. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, it all comes from the hand of God. God's going to bless. What did I read a couple of weeks ago? It rains on the just and the unjust. Just because you're a non-Christian, God's still going to give you opportunities. God's going to give you blessings. It's how you use those blessings. Uh, for who can eat and have enjoyment without Him? I enjoy life. I think everybody in here enjoys life. For the person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy with, while the sinner he has given the task of gathering and collecting so that he might give one to the God, uh, give to one who is good in God's sight. This is vanity and striving after the wind. In the end, only what's done for Jesus is going to last. In the end, it's all God's. And when somebody says that I did it, I did it, I did it, you didn't do nothing. It's all God's. Acting wisely, you know, we can, we can all think we're a lot smarter than we are. Um, we, you know, we've we got to give it all to God. We, you don't want to give it to a deadbeat. We have deadbeats in our society. And that's, that's tough anymore. 
we have people that don't want to work that are getting more than maybe what we think we're getting okay and it's not us it's the government enabling is a great evil in today's society nothing new under the sun same thing it happened in the Old Testament it's still happening today next slide a time for everything there's an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven you know there's time there, there's there's times that are gonna ha there's things that are gonna happen and it's gonna happen over and over and over we can't stop it we can't change it we can pray and, and pray that we've done the right thing and we've raised our kids right and we've done all the right things and change our family tree Deb and I pray every morning that God lets us live long enough to change our family tree I got good kids okay I've got good grandkids but they're not living the best that I think they can do okay so I, we pray every morning that God lets us live long enough to see our family tree get changed and I know that's prayers of everybody in this room a time to give birth and a time to die Job 14 15 says or 14 5 says since his days are determined the number of his months uh, are with you in other words when you're born your days are already determined God already knows the beginning and the end uh, all of Job talks about the whole chapter of Job 14 is talks about the futility the finality the finality of death that whole chapter talks about what's going to happen in the end you're going to die Hebrews 9 27 says once wants to die after this the judgment you're going to die and you're going to be judged for what you've done good or bad plant and root plant and uproot we have to plant and we have to uproot keeps ringing in my pocket vibrating that's what mine is it's mark yeah well they sent me a message Friday said they she talked to me Friday said she probably wouldn't be here she's not feeling real good <laughs> but it's a cycle that's the whole point life is a cycle what we do in life is a cycle kill and heal we kill people people are healed but they still die um, in Genesis 9 16 9 6 it talks about the shedding of blood and 1 Samuel 2 6 says that the Lord kills and he makes alive God's in control when somebody dies God's in control of it and it happens over and over and over it's a, it's a cycle tear down and build up I, I, when I got to that one I really thought about our new person that's running for president that wants to tear down all the buildings in the United States and build all new ones it, it, it's on the news <laughs> but you think about it uh, the hospital that my daughter was born in Baptist Hospital Memphis Tennessee was the biggest hospital in Memphis they flattened it and built two brand new hospitals okay the VA hospital in Memphis that I grew up in they flattened it and built a new hospital closer to home Lowe's Lowe's since I've been here has moved three times 25 years Lowe's was first at I believe if I remember correctly was right there close to Kia Kia where Kia is on the interstate drive 
it was right there. Right there next to Key, or right there about where Key is at. Then Lowe's moved to where they're at now, but they moved, you're facing it, to the left side of it. They built a brand new Lowe's right there on the left-hand side. And then they, bulled, then they built the new Lowe's on the right-hand side and bulldozed, bulldozed the last one. Now, me being in business that I'm in, and, and Ron too, we see, th we see things destroyed and built back up all the time. Think of all the shopping centers that are being built. Do you remember the new car lot that was, or the new restaurant that was built on Interstate Drive that never opened? There's a car lot there now. They never opened. They built this great big humongous building for a Chinese whatever. Okay? It never opened. And they came in and bulldozed it down, and they got a car lot there now. I saw something this week, and I thought, when did they build that? It's over, you know, the, we, we tear down and we build up. We weep and we laugh. Sometimes we'll come in here and we'll just laugh and laugh and laugh. Sometimes we come here and just cry. Sometimes we laugh out of uh, joy or we laugh out of sadness when it really gets down to it. Things that maybe could have changed, but we weep. Um, Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We mourn and dance. I, I thought about this one hard because um, I've been to probably three funerals not in my life but three funerals where they mourn and then they have a great big old party afterwards okay and, and sometimes it's good we mourned at, Ron, at Wayne's funeral but we didn't dance but we were joyous okay but then I've got a cousin that died okay and and or not a cousin, an aunt that died. And first time I'd ever done this, went to Chicago, Illinois for a funeral, and we mourned for the funeral and left the funeral, and then they had a drunkard, drunk, drunkard party after the funeral. And they called it My cousin said, I want them to go to church and have their, their stuff sitting here so they could drink and have a party while they're preaching my funeral. We mourn and then we dance. We throw stones and gather stones. We embrace and we shun. We search and give up the lost. I don't think I read all these verses, but I'm just telling you. We keep and we throw away. We tear apart and we sew together. We're silent and we speak. Amos 5.13 says, Therefore, at such a time, it, a prudent person keeps silent, for it is an evil time. We love and we hate. Psalms 101.3 says, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It, fall away. it shall not fasten its grip on me. In other words, we're not supposed to hate. In the last part of that, or, and then Proverbs 13.5 says, A righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man acts disgustedly and shamefully. The last part of that, what profit is it is there to the worker from <coughs> that, that in which he tolls? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. What profit? Early pursuits 
are unprofitable when you consider God's purpose for your life. You know, if, if you're not a Christian, I'll even say if you are a Christian, if you're not putting God first in your life, those things become unprofitable. The things in life you do become unprofitable. They're, they're a hindrance. Sometimes they're a hindrance to your faith. Sometimes they're a hindrance to the people around you. And, and when, it, when you put everything ahead of God to make that dollar, when you put family away from, ahead of God, ahead of God or you know you got everything ahead of God income family pleasure it's unprofitable Ecclesiastes 1 13 and I set my mind to seek and explore the wisdom concerning all that had been done under the sun it is grievous a grievous task which God has given the sons of men to be afflicted with. Ecclesiastes 2.26 says, For the person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy, while the sinner has given the task of gathering and collecting. You know, and I'm going to say, even a Christian that's not walking with God, has the wrong things on his mind. And 5.16 says, Exactly as a man is born, thus he will die. If you're a Christian, that's what God's plan was. You're going to live your life, and you're going to die your life according to God's plan. If you're a non-Christian, you're going to live your life, and you're going to die your life according to God's plan. No matter what it is, you're going to live in God's plan. The last verse. I, I got through faster than I thought I would. It's all, last, the last slide, it's all in God's plan. He made everything appropriate in His time. God made everything appropriate in His time. He made it. He decided it. Huh? In its time. Well, what did I say? Oh, well, it's time too. It's God's time too. <laughs> he made it all appropriate. Everything, everything in life, it's according to God's time. He also set eternity in the heart, in their heart. Everything, every activity or event culminate into God's purpose. Everything you do is part of God's purpose. It's all, everything. Uh, appropriate. God saw it was good in Genesis 1-1. Even after the curse, act, even after the curse, activity should not be meaningless. We are supposed to have a meaningful life. Uh, and I don't know why I wrote here, futility is fickle and unsatisfying but when you have a meaningless life it's unsatisfying and failure to trust God and failure to trust the wisdom of God uh, we, we have to trust God in everything the even the non-Christian in some ways has to trust God in something they, and they'll say they don't but if, if God's in control of every breath that you take, you've got to put your faith in something, whether it's a Christian faith or just faith. You've got to put your faith in something. God made man for his eternal purpose, and nothing in the post-fall... Uh, Nothing in the post-fall time can bring them complete satisfaction. Nothing's going to satisfy you until you trust God. When you trust God, you're satisfied. And, and that's not just making a profession. That's truly 100% trusting God for everything. 
uh, Romans 11.33 says, On the depth of his riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. 34 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who became the, his counselor, or who first has given him that he might be paid back to him again? We can't pay God back. There's no way we can pay him back for the life he's given us. And then this one, I, we did this song a couple of years ago, or a couple of months ago. For, of, for from him and through him and to him are all things. To God be the glory forever. Amen. Everything we got, everything we've been, everything we're going to be, Everything, everything is all a cause of God. There's nothing that we can do to stop it. I don't believe there's anything that we can do to change it. God has a purpose laid out for us. And I'm not a robot. Because I still have free will. And even when I mess up and I do that free will thing, his purpose is still going to end up in his path. I believe it with all my heart.